morning uh, we are in the last phase of the last but one week. So, we are going to discuss maxima and minima functions of two variables this is very very important because maximization and minimization comes everywhere whether you study physics or engineering or even medicine or biology does not matter you have to deal with the issue of maximizing or minimizing function. In fact, one of the all time greatest mathematician Euler whose notation d y d x you actually use and whose uh, formalisms that you see in many many places are due to him uh, had a statement that nothing in this world happens without a function being maximized or minimized. So, this is a very very important thing, but the real real life modeling is largely with functions of more than one variable. Basically, we are talking about I will just talking about I will just talk in terms of minimization, you can also talk in terms of maximization does not matter. I, I will write everything for a minima, but you can write everything for a maxima if you want as a game. So, just like in the case for real variables, one real variable here, when I am talking about a minimizer, I am essentially what I am I have to be clear what I am essentially looking for, whether I am looking for a local minimizer, any x which gives you the minimum x y pair which gives you the minimum value of this function would be a local minimizer, or you are looking for a global minimizer. Similarly, in this case, global or local maximizers. So, what do you mean by a local minimizer? For example, if you have a function like this say it is not so easy to draw a graph of the three dimensional graph here something like this. So, think that this is a three dimensional contour and this is the x y z axis. So, how you see here also this point is some sort of a minimizer, but over some given region here this is a minimizer for this region, but this could be a global minimizer of this function also. So, we essentially have to deal with local minimizers some cases they become global minimizers. So, a local minimizer is what? So, x bar y bar is called a local minimizer. So, this function f sometimes if you want to write a function of two variables you can write it as a function from r 2 to r, where r 2 is nothing but a symbolism of the plane just telling you that every point in that plane is given by a pair of real numbers called a local minimizer of f. if there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x y satisfying x minus x bar whole square plus y minus y bar whole square the distance between x y and x bar y bar satisfying this we have f of x y is greater than equal to f of x bar y bar. If this relation holds, so x bar y bar is called a strict local minimum, this is this concept you will not find in standard calculus textbooks, but that is what actually happens when you do a second order check which you will soon see. So, it is called a strict local minimizer if everything else is satisfied if we have f of x y strictly greater than f of x bar y bar 
of course, local means they have to satisfy this, there must be some delta for which this happens for all x y which is not equal to x bar y bar. Okay. Now, how do I detect, how do I really start trying to find a minima? We are not going to draw graphs and look at the graphs, not even the modern mathematical uh, softwares can actually give you a vision of the graph from R 2 to R, they cannot play, map it for whole of R to you, essentially map it for a part of the R 2, a part of the domain and then you look at it. So, what you can find even the, if you declare some point as a global minima that could be actually a local minimizer as a whole. So, essentially there must be some other ways and analytic ways of finding them. Uh, we have already studied analytic ways of finding them in our course in course in or class in the calculus of when we are talking about the maximum minimum of functions of one variable. So, we know that if a function of one variable has a minimizer at x bar, then f dash of x bar must be equal to 0. Could we uh, try out some sort of thing like that? So, now suppose x bar y bar is the solution. then an f is differentiable. So, when f is differentiable, somebody says that it is differentiable, this term differentiability is not so simple when you have functions of two variable, but for all of our work and all of the usual practical work in calculus, this means f has the partial derivatives, f has all the partial derivatives and they are continuous all the first partial derivatives and they are continuous means the first partial derivatives are continuous as a function of x y. C o n t is short for continuous. So, essentially that is the meaning. So, when then if this happens then x bar y bar must follow this condition. Okay. x bar y bar must follow this condition that is you should have del of del x computed at x bar y bar that must give you 0 and del f del y at x bar y bar that must give you 0. Let us consider the function f of x y, let us test this that whether it is actually happening x square plus y square. You can understand that the x square plus y square is always this function is anyway always greater than equal to 0 and if I put x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 the function value would be 0. So, here x bar y bar is equal to 0 0 is the minimizer. But you see, if you take del of del f x, it is 2 x and del of del f del del f of y is or del del y of f is 2 y and this implies that del of del x at the point 0 0 is 0 and del of del y, you just put x equal to 0 or y equal to 0 there at the point 0 0 is also 0 which validates what we have said, but these are just necessary conditions and need, need not be sufficient. Right. For example, if you take f x y equal to x square minus y square, then find the points where this would be satisfied. So, we are trying to find points where this will hold. So, this will again lead me to the equation 2 x equal to 0 and minus 2 y equal to 0, which would again imply that the only point where the function the de partial derivatives vanish is x bar equal to 0 and y bar equal to 0. But if you draw the graph of this function, which this is called the saddle graph, then you will
So, what you see I have obviously not drawn the graph very well. So, this is called a saddle graph. So, this point x 0 y 0 you know this it is minimizing this curve along the y axis or maximizing the curve along the x axis. So, it is maximizing the function along the x axis and minimizing the curve along the y axis. So, such points are called saddle points which may also occur sometimes. So, you see x bar x x 0 y 0 here x bar y bar equal to 0 0 is not not truly a minimizer, but it satisfies the necessary condition satisfies this condition of the gradient being equal to 0. So, this condition is only a necessary condition and not a sufficient condition. Now, is there any way is, is there a way to talk about sufficiency when if we invoke second order derivative in the case of functions of one real variable. So, now we look at the sufficient conditions. So, what we are now going to do is we are going to list down the second order conditions which are required to be checked at a critical point. Now, suppose you have a point where say we have a point a b such that the derivative of a b equal to 0, the partial derivative is 0. Now, I am going to make a check assuming that the function is now twice differentiable or twice continuously differentiable if you want whether I do have some we whether we can have some conclusion about what is the true nature of a b. So, number 1. So, if you have this, so if at a b you have the following that del 2 f del x 2 is strictly less than 0 and del 2 f del x 2 del 2 f del y 2 I am assuming all of these are continuous because then I can have that del 2 f del x del y and del 2 f del y del x is same like we had discussed in the last class. So, if we, if at a b these quantities are found to be greater than 0, then a b is a strict local maximizer. This word strict is not mentioned in the calculus books, but it is actually like that. If at a b you have this one, So, I am not going to the details of the proofs. So, you just learn it as a working rule for the moment. Then A B is a strict local minimizer. Now, if at A B you have no information on this. So, it could be 0 for example, you just have the following information for example, this could be 0, but you have if you now if you have the following that and you have no other information at a b, then a b is a saddle point. So, what do you mean by a saddle point? Saddle point means, so if I instead of if I fix my y and I put the value of y as b, then this becomes a function of x and then as a function of x at the point a the function is either maximized or minimized 
and conversely if I put fun a in the in place of x in the function and then it becomes a function of y then at the point b it is either maximized or minimized. So, if it is maximized along x it will be minimized along y, if it is minimized along x it will be maximized along y. Such points are called saddle points. The usual definition given for example, in Thomas and Finney that if you take a point around in one side you will find the function value is going down and one side you will find the function value is going up is not really a very uh, logical definition at least to me I, I do not find the definition very interesting. In that sense every point will really become a saddle point. Uh, so, the, the true nature of the saddle if you look at the, the thing here if this is my x axis this is my y axis and this is my z axis. So, you see if I fix up the value so take this point 0 0. So, at the point 0 0 this is very crucial point at this point 0 0 at the origin here if I this is my origin if I take if I fix the value 0 and put it here put y equal to 0 if I put y equal to 0 then what is happening at x equal to 0 x square is getting the function x square is getting minimized. If I put now x equal to 0 then at x y equal to 0 at, at y equal to 0 the function minus y square is getting maximized. So, if you look at this function so that 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 is a very very important thing that you have now put x equal to 0 x is now now look at what is the nature of the function and then that, that is of this form minus y square and then so then the z values are nothing but z is z becomes minus of y square so it is of this form and it is getting maximized at zero so it usually what happens is a saddle point in optimization is always said to be a point where when you are fixing up the x value then it is maximized along y and if you fix up the y value it is minimized along x ok. So, this is a very crucial point the saddle point has to have that property that if you fix the x that is you put one of the value critical point values and if of x and then as a function of y it will get minimized as a maximized in the other critical value and if, if you put a function of if you put say y equal to uh, for example, y equal to I mean, if you put the value of y the critical value of y then as a function of x you will get minimized at the critical value of x and this is a very very crucial point to understand not the definition where they have given that you have to look around and see whether it is at one point it is increasing at one point it is decreasing, but the crucial fact is that this sort of thing is happening at a saddle point. So, every point is really not a saddle point when you are coming to functions of two variables, but when you are in functions of one variable for example, like this so for, for f x equal to x a cube. So, a point is either a local minima global minima or a point of this form, but the function is changing its I mean a curve is changing its shape that this sort of points are called points of inflection and these I mean the a, a critical point has to be any of the three local glo local global minima or local global maxima or a point of inflection it cannot be anything else, but such a thing can happen if your function if you are in the function of two variables. See if you have a function of two variables take an example f of x y is equal to y minus 1 whole square plus x a cube. So, here if you do grad f x y equal grad f x y you simply get 3 x square and 2 y minus 1 and so x bar is equal to 0 and y bar equal to 1 is the only critical point, but this critical point suppose you put it is neither a local minima or a global minima or a local maxima or a global maxima. Now, you put x bar equal to 0. So, you have y minus 1 square now. So, y minus 1 square does not get maximized at y equal y bar equal to 1, it get minimized at y bar equal to 1. And if you put say x bar uh, y bar equal to 1 and you have x a cube and you know that x a cube does not get minimized 
at a x bar equal to 0, we have just drawn the graph of x equal in the last page. So, you see immediately that this point cannot be a saddle point. So, there are functions where, a, where there are critical points and the only critical point which are neither local minima nor local maxima or global minima, global maxima or uh, even a saddle point is just a critical point. This is the major difference between the study of maximization minimization in one variable and to maximization minimization in two variables and this is absolutely critical. I am just giving the saddle point idea is critical. I am sure that you can compute out these things and uh, look at look at any examples from the book. And if you are, have any questions, my TAs will answer you on the on the forum. But for example, if you take the function f x y equal to x y. So here x is so if you take grad f x y equal to zero zero, so then you will have y x y bar x bar equal to 0 0 right. So, here what, what will you have? So, here what is the issue here? Here, here you have y, here you have x. So, here also you have 0 0 as the critical point. Now, what would happen if I put 0. You know very well if you draw this graph, this graph is a slightly strange, strangeish graph. It is also, it, it does not, again you, you can see the picture in the book of uh, Thomas, Thomas's calculus. You will observe that at the point 0, 0, if I put x equal to 0, uh, then the function becomes 0. So, basically then it is a 0 function, it will be maximized at 0, it is a trivial thing, but it is again, it will be minimized if you put y equal to x equal to 0, then it, it will again be uh, maximized at y at y equal to 0. You can say ok, I can put any value of y and that will, that will maximize it, but no I am just looking at the point 0, 0. So, at the point 0, 0 it will be doing both the things, but if you put 0, 0 it is 0, but if I put 0 minus 1, this will when I, if I put 1 and minus 1, it will have a negative value. So, you see these are not local maximizer or global maximizer, but is a saddle point. So, it is very important to keep in view that for example, here that this could be a critical point without being a saddle point, but this is an, an obvious saddle point. While in the earlier case, earlier case here, this saddle point had some more information, it was giving you more information about how it is not, a, this is not a trivial saddle point, while the other one, this one what the, this case f of x y f of f x y equal to x y 0 0 is a trivial saddle point, but here again you have to concentrate on this example which I have given where the only critical point is neither a saddle point nor a global or local maximum. So, we would end it here and thank you very much.